Hello and welcome to A Course in Miracles, the workbook for students. We're on Lesson 135. If I defend myself, I am attacked. Okay, who would defend himself unless he thought he were attacked, that the attack was real, and that his own defense could save himself? Okay, good question. And herein lies the folly of defense. It gives illusions full reality. And then attempts to handle them as real. It adds illusions to illusions, thus making correction doubly difficult. And it is this you do when you attempt to plan the future, activate the past, or organize the present as we wish. You operate from the belief that you must protect yourself from what is happening because it must contain what threatens you. A sense of threat is an acknowledgement of an inherent weakness, a belief that there is danger which has power to call on you to make appropriate defense. The world is based on this insane belief in all its structures, all its thoughts and doubts, its penalties and heavy armaments, its legal definitions, its code codes, its ethics, its leaders, and its gods all serve but to preserve its sense of threat. For no one walks the world in armature, but must have terror striking at his heart. So basically that's saying that we, um, that the world is based on fear. And when we defend ourselves, it makes the idea that we can be attacked, be destroyed, be killed, whatever, real. And then we have to deal with it as though it were real. When the whole Course of Miracles is saying to us that this life that we think we are, this independent self, in this world is an illusion. And if we make it real by defending ourselves, then we lose our true sense of our invulnerability, that we are invulnerable, invulnerable to attack. So that's kind of what we're talking about in this first paragraph, that the whole world, everything about it, is built on the idea of fear. If we don't do something to defend ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to protect ourselves, to set up for a good future, that we will be destroyed or, or miserable or all of our worst nightmares will come true. We'll be alone, poor, living with no one to take care of us, all these kinds of thoughts. Defense is frightening. It stems from fear, increasing fear as each defense is made. So every time we make another defense, we only strengthen the fear, the Course says. You think it offers safety when, you know, whatever it is we do, buy a gun, alarm system, put up a fence, uh, prepare for the future with all of our financial ducks in a row. All these things, it says, we think that they offer us safety, but they only increase the fear in us. And I don't think the Course is ever trying to make us feel guilty for putting up for our retirement or or doing other things like that. Basically, the Course is talking about when 
we're motivated and ruled by our fears and we make our fears real in our life instead of being motivated and ruled by our love and our invulnerability and and our trust and our knowingness that we cannot be destroyed so let's go a little further and look at this but why if I defend myself am I attacked okay let's look a little more you think it offers safety yet it speaks of fear made rear real and terror justified isn't it strange that you do not pause to ask as you allow as you elaborate your plans and make your armor thicker and your locks more tight what you defend and how and against what so it's asking us to ask what are we defending how are we defending it and against what are we defending it let us consider first what you defend it must be something that's very weak and easily assaulted. It must be something made easy prey, unable to protect itself and needing your defense. Well, what but the body has such frailty that constant care and watchful deep concern are needful to protect its little life? What but the body falters and must fail to serve the Son of God as a worthy host? So the body is what it's suggesting that we are defending. So now it asks, yet it is not the body that can fear nor be a thing of fear. Okay, we're afraid for the body, but yet the body cannot fear or be a thing of fear. It has no needs but those you assign to it. It needs no complicated structures of defense, no help inducing medicine, no care and no concern at all. Defend its life or give it gifts to make it beautiful or walls to make it safe. And you but say your home is open to the thief of time. Corruptible and crumbling so unsafe it must be guarded with your very life so is not this picture fearful can you be at peace with such a concept of your home so with the body the way we see the body as being so fragile and in need of care and constantly needing to be protected it asks us the question, can we be at peace when we think that the body is our home? Yet what endowed the body with the right to serve you thus except your own belief? So we're the ones who give our bodies meaning. It is your mind which gave the body all the functions that you see in it and sets its value far beyond a little pile of dust and water who would make defense of something that he recognizes as this if we really just realize that it's saying that your body just does what your mind tells it to do it's just a pile of dust and water and if you really knew this about your body would you really try to defend it would you really think it even needed defense it says the body is in need of no defense this cannot be too often emphasized the body is not in need of defense so it's going to emphasize that over and over to us we need to get that into our brains, into our mind. 
This cannot be too often emphasized. It will be strong and healthy if the mind does not abuse it by assigning it to roles it cannot fulfill, to purposes beyond its scope, and to exalted aims which it cannot accomplish. Such attempts, ridiculous yet deeply cherished, are the sources for the many mad attacks you make upon it, that we make upon our body. For it seems to fail your hopes, your needs, your values, and your dreams. Still talking about the body. The self with a little s, the mind-made self, the ego, that needs protection, is not real. This self that I've thought of my whole life as being Micah, that lives in this body, this personality, is not real. And if it's not real, it doesn't need protection. Right? The body, valueless and hardly worth the least defense, needs merely to be perceived as quite apart from you. <laughs> it is not who we are. We are not the body. We need to perceive it as apart from us, and it becomes a healthy, serviceable instrument through which the mind can operate until its usefulness is over. And then who would want to keep it when its usefulness is done? Defend the body and you have attacked your mind. For you have been in it, you have seen in it, in the body, the faults, the weaknesses, the limits, and the lacks from which you think the body must be saved. You will not see the mind as separate from bodily conditions. And you will impose upon the body all the pain that comes from the conception of the mind as limited and fragile and apart from other minds and separate from its source. So we're back to the separation again. That's the problem, the, the idea that we are separate. And the body is just a symbol of that idea of separation. And we, the body is, is like what we use to make us seem separate and apart from everyone and every other thing on this earth. Right? Because I see myself in this body, and you're over there in that body, so that makes us seem like me and you. Dualism, two of us. So that's one of the main reasons, and also the fact that we think we're hiding in the body, created the body to hide in. But anyway, if you defend if we defend our bodies, we've attacked our minds. And you will and we impose upon the body all the pain that comes from the conception of the mind as limited, <laughs> fragile, and apart from other minds and separate from its source. These are the thoughts in need of healing. Not the body, but these thoughts are in need of healing. And the body will respond once the thoughts are healed with help, when they have been corrected and replaced with truth. This is the body's only real defense. To correct the, the wrong thinking in the mind and the body will just follow. So that's, that's where we need to do the correction, is in our mind, the Course is telling us. This is the body's only real defense, yet, is this where you look for its defense? You offer it protection 
of a kind from which it gains no benefit at all, but merely adds to your distress of mind. You do not heal, but merely take away the hope of healing, for you fail to see where hope must lie if it be meaningful. The hope is in the changing of our mind from separation to wholeness. A healed mind does not plan. It carries out the plans that it receives through listening to wisdom that it's not its own. So a healed mind does not plan, it carries out the plans that it receives through listening to wisdom that is not its own, like listening to the voice for God. It waits until it has been taught what should be done and then proceeds to do it. It does not depend upon itself for anything except its adequacy to fulfill the plans assigned to it. The healed mind is secure in certainty that obstacles cannot impede its progress to the accomplishment of any goal that serves the greater plan established for the good of everyone. A healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan Although it cannot know the outcome which is best, the means by which it is achieved, nor how to recognize the problem that the plan is made to solve, it must misuse the body in its plans until it recognizes that this is so. And this is really, um, may be hard, for if you're a planner and a, a, a worrier, and this passage might be extra challenging for you, but if it is, it's the Holy Spirit is not saying if you're a planner to give up planning. All it's saying is saying, look. Ask yourself, what am I trying to protect? Why am I trying to protect the body? Is my planning, is this true that my planning to make my future safe, is it making the problem real in my mind? And that's what we're really looking at here. And maybe it is. And if it is, it's not something that the Course is saying feel guilty about. It's just saying, look, we just need to realize that this is what we're doing and then we can bring it to the Holy Spirit to be taught more. I mean, we're 130-some lessons, 35 lessons into this Course. And some of these things are going to be very challenging for us. And this one, especially if you're a person that is a planner and, and has to feel like everything is in order in order for you to feel peace. So it's just asking you to look at this. Is this really working? You know, all this planning. <laughs> A healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. And it says it must misuse the body in its plans until it recognizes that this is so. But when it is accepted, this is true, that it doesn't have to do with this planning, then it is healed and it can let the body go. <coughs> hmm. 
But until it comes to this understanding, and we will come to it, but until we do, and our mind is only on protecting the body and defending the body against the things that we're afraid that could happen to it, you know, we're not going to be able to let the body go and realize that that's not what we are and to, f and to get to the place where we can stop defining ourselves as this body. Enslavement of the body to the plans the unhealed mind sets up to save itself, it must make, must make the body sick. It is not free to be the means of helping in a plan which far exceeds its own protection and which needs its service for a little while. In this capacity, its health is assured for everything the mind employs for this will function flawly, flawlessly and with the strength that has been given it and it cannot fail. It is perhaps not easy to perceive that self-initiated plans are but defenses. What the purpose, what's with the purpose of all of them were made to realize. They are the means by which a frightened mind would undertake its own protection at the cost of truth. <laughs> So here's the nugget of truth to see that all this self-initiated planning is nothing more than the means by which the frightened mind would undertake its own protection at the cost of truth. Why at the cost of truth? Because it doesn't need to be protected. The fears are not real. The illusions are not real. This is not difficult to realize in some forms which these self-deceptions take, where the denial of reality is very obvious, yet planning is not recognized as a defense. The mind engaged in planning for itself is occupied in setting up control of future happenings. It does not think that it will be provided for, you know, whatever the, the future will be provided for, <laughs> unless it makes these provisions. So time becomes a future emphasis. We're not living in the now. To be controlled by learning and experience obtained from the past events and previous beliefs. But this is, you know, and that sounds pretty um, like good wisdom. Use your past to help you uh, plan for the future. But what it doesn't see is that it overlooks the present. When we're in this frame of mind, we overlook the present. For it rests on the idea that the past has taught enough to let the mind direct its future course. So I've learned enough that I can predict and take care of my future from my past. So the mind that plans in this way is refusing to allow for change. What it has learned before becomes the basis for its future goals. Its past experience directs its choice of what will happen. And it does not see that here and now is everything it needs to guarantee the future quite unlike the past. 
without a continuity of any old ideas and sick, sick beliefs. Anticipation plays no part at all for present confidence directs the way. So it's not a life of anticipating, oh, this might happen, that might happen, but it's living in this present confidence that all is taken care of, that all is well, that we are resting and supported by the love of God. That's the kind of life that we miss out on if we're just always anxious anticipating the future. <laughs> Defenses are the plans you undertake to make against the truth. Their aim is to select what you approve and disregard what you consider incompatible with your beliefs of your reality. Yet what remains is meaningless indeed. For it is your reality that is the threat which your defenses would attack, obscure, and take apart and crucify. What could you not accept if you but knew that everything that happens, all events, past, present, and to come, are gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good. And there it is. We are not alone and our every event, past, present, future, is planned by the one whose only purpose is to plan a future for our good. And if we're always planning and defending against the future, and we're not paying attention to what's happening in the now and resting in the love and the support of our Father in heaven. Perhaps you have misunderstood his plan, for he would never offer pain to you. But your defenses done, did not let you see his loving blessings shine in every step that you ever took. While you made plans for death, he led you gently to eternal life. Your present trust in him is the defense that promises a future undisturbed without a trace of sorrow, and with joy that constantly increases as this life becomes a holy instant, set in time, but hate heeding only immortality. Let no defenses but your present trust direct the future, and this life becomes a meaningful encounter with the truth that only your defenses would conceal. Without defenses, you become a light which heaven gratefully acknowledges to be its own, and it will lead you on in ways appointed for your happiness, according to the ancient plan begun when time was born. Your followers <laughs> would join their light with yours, and it would be increased until the world is lighted up with joy. And gladly will our brothers lay aside their cumbersome defenses, which avail them nothing it could only terrify. We will anticipate that time today with present confidence, for this is part of what was planned for us today is part of what was planned for us. We will be sure that everything we need is given us for our accomplishment of this today. We make no plans for how it will be done, but realize that our defenselessness is all that is required for the truth to dawn upon our minds with certainty. That's all we require, our defenselessness. 
For 15 minutes, twice a day, we rest from senseless planning and from every thought that blocks the truth from entering our minds. Today we receive, instead of a plan, that a plan, instead of plan, that we may give instead of organize. And we are giving truly, as we say, if I defend myself, I'm attacked. But in defenselessness, I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses have hidden. Nothing but that. If there are plans to make, you'll be told of them. They will not be the plans you thought were needed, nor indeed the answers to the problems which you thought confronted you. But they are answers to another kind of question, which remains unanswered, yet in need of answering, until the answer comes to you at last. All your defenses have been aimed at not receiving what you're going to receive today. And in the light and joy of simple trust, you will but wonder why you ever thought that you must be defended from release. Heaven asks nothing. It's hell that makes extravagant demands for sacrifice. You give up nothing in these times today when undefended you present yourself to your Creator as you really are. He has remembered you. Today, we will remember Him. For this is Easter time in your salvation. And you rise again from what was seeming death and hopelessness. Now is the light of hope reborn in you. For now, you come without defense to learn the part for, your, for you within the plan of God. What little plans or magical beliefs can still have value when you have received your function from the voice for God himself. What a day. Try not to shape this day as you believe would benefit you most, for you cannot conceive of all the happiness that comes to you without your planning. Learn today, and all the world would take this giant stride and celebrate your Easter time with you. Throughout the day, as foolish little things appear to raise defensiveness in you and tempt you to exchange and weaving plan engage in weaving plans remind yourself that this is a special day for learning and acknowledge it with this statement this is my Easter time and I would keep it holy I will not defend myself because the Son of God needs no defense against the truth of its reality. So that was our lesson today. It's a bit long one, but it's an important one, this whole idea of defenselessness. And we will look at it again. And, and this is like our Easter time, it says, when we are beginning to wake up and rise from hopelessness. So God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I will see you tomorrow. Aloha.